a celebration going on right now, organized by the diva of Dump Divas Cat Engelbert and the WNBA front office. Celebrate the butt bungo! For the first time ever, the WNBA dump might actually get noticed in the month of September. For the first time ever, the WNBA might receive a minuscule amount of attention during football season. As you guys know, once week one of the NFL season officially begins, the WNBA is completely forgotten. All of their pretend friends in the mainstream media who claim to be fans of pretend basketball, who claim to be dedicated to premier dump diving, once the NFL begins, the pretenders in the media, they abandon the WNBA so they can cover a league that actually generates traffic to their shitty websites. But this year might be different. Not only could the WNBA remain in the mainstream, the dump was also spared the potential humiliation of having ratings for the regular season far outpace ratings for the playoffs, which is better known as the chase for the golden toilet. Headline at Yahoo Sports. Caitlin Clark clinches playoff spot, snaps longest postseason drought in WNBA history. If you felt powerful winds last night, that was not coming from a tornado. Believe it or not, it wasn't coming from the boodle of the whoopee cushion on the view either. That breeze you felt last night, that was the sigh of relief coming from Cat Engelbert, the player who has single-handedly carried the dump all season, the only player in the league that is capable of drawing an audience, the clear winner for Rookie of the Year, the most valuable player in the league, has made the playoffs, guaranteeing that at least one series in the chase for the Golden Toilet will be able to draw ratings. But according to Charles Barkley, not everyone is happy to see Caitlin Clark in the WNBA playoffs. I guess the pretenders are still jealous of one of the only real basketball players in the league. <laughs> if you haven't already, make sure to like and subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter at KC underscore BTL84. Earlier this morning, Charles Barkley, he was the guest on The Ringer with Bill Simmons. You know, I really like Bill Simmons. I feel like he is the antithesis of Pat McAfee. The way I look at this is, and executives at ESPN, they allude to this when they are speaking to the media. Pat McAfee resonates with a younger demographic, or as we used to call them, kids. Pat McAfee's kind of like the drunk uncle who never grew up, so it only makes sense that he is relatable to kids who haven't grown up. Bill Simmons, I feel like he's the one who adults listen to. What's that verse in the Bible? When I became a man, I put away childish things. When you become a man, you forget about Pat McAfee and you listen to Bill Simmons. <laughs> Anyway, Charles Barkley, he was his guest this morning. While the rest of the mainstream media continues wasting time talking about Angel Reese, did you see that last night? Angel Reese had 200 rebounds and 2,000 missed layups. The WNBA called it a double-double. Angel Reese continues to be amazing. You know, as I was recording this video, the Chicago Bravado, they tweeted out a video with the caption, We know you have been waiting for this one. Angel Reese is mic'd up. <laughs> I wasted the next 90 seconds watching this painfully boring video of Angel Reese quoting some modern rapper named Lotto. I guess Lotto's who all the cool kids are listening to nowadays, so I checked out some of her music. If I happened to hit the Lotto, I would donate all the money to the record company and demand they stop promoting Lotto. But instead of wasting time talking about Angel Reese and her mythical streak of double-doubles, Charles Barkley and Bill Simmons, they were talking about the only player worth talking about in the WNBA, Caitlin Clark. During the segment, Charles Barkley said something that kind of surprised me. Matter of fact, Charles Barkley said something that I've never heard another grown man say before. I'm a big fan of the WNBA. Um. What? 
not only have I never heard a grown man say that, I've never heard a woman claim to be a fan of the WNBA. I've seen people identify as fans of Caitlin Clark. I have even seen people claim to be fans of Angel Reese. But I have never heard someone proudly and publicly say they're a fan of pretend basketball. Charles Barkley absolutely unloaded on the dump divers who continue to be jealous of Caitlin Clark. Watch for yourself. These ladies, they cannot have f this Caitlin Clark thing up any worse if they tried. This girl is incredible. The, the number of attention, eyeballs, she's bought the cards and the pros. And for these women to have this petty jealousness, you say to yourself, damn. What is going on here? They couldn't have f***ed this thing up any worse. There's been so much negativity. Charles Barkley's absolutely right. There's been nothing but negativity in the WNBA this season. Hell, there's been nothing but negativity in the WNBA for the last 30 years. Only difference now is people are paying attention. Charles Barkley's also right when he says the negativity is rooted in jealousy, which is the same thing that we have been saying here on the channel since before Caitlin Clark put on her hard hat and steel toed boots and entered the dump. But I disagree with Charles Barkley when he says this is not good for the WNBA. The silence of Caitlin Clark amidst the constant jealousy that she deals with, it's turned her into a sympathetic figure. And to her credit, Caitlin Clark has not used this jealousy and resentment to turn herself into the ultimate victim, which is exactly what would happen if the same thing happened to one of the other 143 unknown players in the WNBA. But there is no doubt the negativity, the resentment, the jealousy, the controversy, it has had a positive impact on the WNBA's ratings. It's also helped keep the WNBA in the mainstream. Just think about it. When the WNBA is talked about on ESPN, when Colin Cowherd talks about pretend basketball, or when we talk about the dump here on the channel, we're not talking about the actual game. I'm not inviting pretend NFL analyst Mina Kimes on the channel so she can pretend to break down pretend basketball. No one wants to listen to Sherry Swoops break down the dynamics of a missed layup. The vast majority of the time the WNBA is mentioned in the media, they're talking about what's happening off the court, or they're talking about the flagrant fouls against Caitlin Clark. The only time I show actual footage of a WNBA game, it's when I share the hours-long compilation of Angel Reese missing layups. Let's just be real here. No one talks about the pretend basketball in the WNBA because no one cares about it. Even though Caitlin Clark is a dynamic player, even though it's entertaining watching Angel Reese dominating the janitors in garbage time, the on-court product in the WNBA, it sucks. There is nothing entertaining about it. I have tried to watch the WNBA this season. Matter of fact, I have watched more WNBA games this year than I have in the previous three decades combined. It is painful to watch. I'm not expecting NBA quality basketball, but I do expect players who call themselves professionals to be able to make wide open shots. No one wants to waste their time watching a game where the score at the end of the first quarter is 12 to 12. The drama with Caitlin Clark, that is the primary reason that the WNBA has seen consistent ratings throughout the season. Problem is, I don't think this is sustainable long term. Now, Caitlin Clark, she's going to be fine. She's a real basketball player. She's only going to get better. Same thing with Angel Reese. I know I give her a hard time, but Angel Reese, she is a dominant rebounder. If she could figure out how to make layups and mature just a little bit with age, Angel Reese is going to be fine. And there are a handful of other players in the dump who are skilled. Kelsey the Plumber, AJ Wilson, Sabribri Ionescu, the Ageless Wonder, Donna Taurasi. There are some decent players players in the WNBA, but overall, the level of talent and the quality of play, it is absolutely atrocious. That is a serious problem long term because the drama, 
it can only take you so far. Caitlin Clark can only take you so far. At some point, the rest of the league is going to be expected to perform. You know why the NBA surged in popularity in the 1990s? Well, KC, it's because of the greatness of Michael Jordan. Yeah. Yeah, the league rode Superman's cape, but the reason the NBA was so popular is because it was so competitive. Michael Jordan had constant rivalries throughout his career. The Pistons, the Knicks, the Pacers, the Jazz, Orlando when Horace Grant left in free agency, the Suns when Charles Barkley was chasing a title. Jordan, he had other stars to play off of. There has been nothing but drama in the WNBA this season. And there has not been one single rivalry created. The media, they tried to create a rivalry between Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese, but the bravado, they can't win a fucking game. Both the television networks and Kat Engelbert, they are going to be begging for Caitlin Clark to make a deep playoff run. Telling you right now, if she gets bounced in the first round, it is going to be humiliating for the WNBA. The jealousy, the resentment, it could also increase with teams who advance because once Caitlin Clark is eliminated, so are the viewers. One of my channel members sent me an interesting report last night. Since August 15th, the WNBA has uploaded highlights of 44 games on YouTube. Six games involved Caitlin Clark. The other 38 involved anonymous players. The six games involving Caitlin Clark, 2.1 million combined views. The 38 games involving anonymous players, 1.4 million combined views. Caitlin Clark highlights. They're averaging 350,000 views, while the rest of the league, 36,000. <laughs> I think this is going to be the most important postseason in the history of the dump. Caitlin Clark is going to deliver more viewers than the league's ever seen. I guarantee you, they are going to use Caitlin Clark as the lead-in so the following game has a chance to draw decent ratings, which would be smart. But the question is, will the rest of the league be able to step up and perform? Will the rest of the league be able to be entertaining? Will the rest of the league be able to deliver a decent product? I think the answer to those questions is no, no, and no. What about you though? Is this the most important postseason in WNBA history? Will the rest of the league be able to perform? Also, give me your thoughts on Charles Barkley claiming that WNBA players have pretty much screwed up this season. I think the off-court drama has helped them out, mainly because they can't generate interest on the court. But do you agree with Charles Barkley? Let me know. Sound off in the comments below. Like, subscribe, share the video. Appreciate your support. Best way to contact me is by email at btlkc84 at gmail.com and I'll see you guys tomorrow.